I listen to this now. ANC Agrileni Chairperson Mzondi Lemasina is looking to replace Paul Mashetile as the national treasurer of the ANC. He enjoys the support of his region ahead of the December elective conference. Uh, Sina joins us now live in studio uh, to hear more on that. Good evening. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you think of your friends' uh, utterances? Are you still friends? Are you good? Yes, yes. We're very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I suppose the whole conversation around women leadership in the country is something that not only the EFF is facing, but something that uh, one would say even the ANC, as it goes to its national elective conference, it's something that the ANC needs to be awakened to. Uh, the region is uh, supporting you, uh, but I see the other name, Paul Mashatile and Nomvula Mukonyane. Uh, they have not commented on the president uh, uh, post, but those particular three. Why did they choose to, 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 to particularly comment on those three? Well, uh, you'll recall that uh, Comrade Paul Mashatile is uh, our longest serving leader in Gauteng, so we still hold him in high regard, so I think it would have been that consideration. So as Comrade uh, Nomvula Mukonyan um, <coughs> has been the leader of the ANC, very strong woman, uh, capable, who is ready to lead, and I think that, that those would have been consideration when the comrades were, were making the, the, the assessment, and deliberately because um, uh, we are not an authority, so... Uh, we're just depositing views so that we're able to guide our branches in the ANC. And the province uh, took it a step further, and uh, they mentioned whoever they mentioned uh, for various positions. Um, but I must say that um, in the main, my campaign has been anchored uh, firstly by branches of the ANC and secondly by the generation that I've led the youth league uh, with. So, so that's where we are. Does it matter to you who will be the president? Well, uh, it really doesn't matter. We just need a strong national executive committee, not the current situation of yes men, people clap hands even if they are wrong things in the African National Congress. We need to hold each and every leader accountable for their action or inaction. Yeah. What, what do you think is, is, has led to that? I, I saw an article earlier on the Sunday Times, Nomvula <coughs> in particular, saying this is the weakest NEC in the history of the ANC. In the 110 years of the ANC, this has got to be the weakest NEC. You share that sentiment? Well, I think so. In fact, the, the reason that uh, she's given, uh, you know, uh, there would have been some NEC meeting that was convened for nine hours to discuss whether or not, uh, in, the, in the light of what is happening with load shedding, uh, or people losing jobs and all that, to discuss whether or not <coughs> the leadership elected in the Gurulain was legitimate or not. When they, they actually knew that the system they used um, uh, had actually kicked out those five branches. But they sat for nine hours discussing whether or not something that the province uh, took a province uh, not less than an hour to resolve to, to, so that there is a status of the, of, of the region. I think that there's a lot of wrong things that uh, are happening, including a uh, failure to implement policies of the African National Congress who would have made very firm uh, uh, policy proposition in NASREC uh, in 2017, including expropriation of land without compensation we are now hearing stories that it can be done, it's not possible, it's, not, it's going to uh, affect the markets and all that. Uh, the, the leadership has got a responsibility. When we elect you, we elect you to go and implement the resolutions because that's how political party system run in the country. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. But let's, let's, let's talk about uh, what, what, what you are raising, particularly as far as a, <coughs> a, a, a weak NEC. The 52nd resolutions of the ANC when they looked into the party situation. They said, the movement has failed to preserve its character, culture, and values. They pointed out flawed approach to membership recruitment and um, other issues, social distancing, patronage, careerism, corruption and abuse of power, ineffective management of uh, the interface between the ANC and the state. 52nd. 53rd. Uh, uh, conference of the ANC, same resolution comes up. But there's a gradual erosion of the character, the, the culture, and the values of the African National Congress. 54th conference, it's the same thing. There's a pattern here that you can't particularly say can be pinned on one leadership. It has been a consistent deterioration of the culture and the value uh, and, 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 and the systems of the ANC over two decades. Well, that's why things have to change. Uh, I'm happy that um, uh, this time around, uh, unlike other conferences that you are referring to, all of us there who went there to clap hands for the leadership. This time around, we want the leadership to clap hands for the generation so that things can change. Because if you look at the evolution of the ANC and how I at each particular time when there would have been changes, uh, it would have been a younger generation uh, in the main. 
Uh, if you look at the late thirties, uh, you know, uh, Mandela and his generation uh, went on to form the Youth League to change the method of, of struggle in the ANC, uh, which took us uh, to, to the uh, 1952 and so on, the, 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 the defiance campaign and, and up to the Freedom Charter. But after that, the leadership, when it was arrested, there was a lull. Uh, but in 1969, we went to Morogoro to define the new method of struggle where we produce the four pillars of the struggle on how we're going to conduct the struggle until we attain democracy. And um, uh, in 1994, uh, before we, we came into democracy, we, the ANC had to theorize how to govern. Yeah. Uh, so at all those uh, different uh, uh, epochs, uh, you would have had a leadership that um, is infused over time to try and change certain, a certain because the reason is, you can't have people who served with Mandela who are still in the NEC. They have nothing to contribute, <laughs> quite frankly. Sure, you, you are not saying that the interorganizational uh, instability has got to do with the fact that there are old people who served with Mandela. Who are no, 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 I'm not talking ageism. I'm saying that you, you can only contribute so much. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, I was arguing a, a lot with the comrades in Negurulin that having served two terms, a third term, really, but, uh, you know, the, the issue was. Let's manage the transition so that the younger generation who comes after you will understand the culture. So we've got to infuse <coughs> quite a number of people. I'm happy that uh, in the position of the deputy president, for instance, there are people who came from our generation. Uh, Comrade uh, Nkensani is there. Comrade Lamola is there. Uh, in the national chairperson, Comrade Masondo is there. In the SGO, Comrade uh, uh, Figile Mbalula is there. Mtumisen is there. And so on and so on. And in the treasurer, we are there with Lungisa and, and others. So, so we should be able to, all of us, uh, to to really put pressure on the factions, because uh, factions have to die in the NC to deal decisively with the characterization of the 52nd, the 53rd, and the 54th uh, of the ANC, because uh, things have to change. Yeah. But that still doesn't answer my question, to say what has not happened in that whole entire leadership, two terms of uh, former President Zuma, now it's the term of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, these things have been articulated, political education, changing the membership process and how uh, the, the, the cadre is recruited, what you teach them about the values of the ANC, uh, how you deal with patronage, those things have been repeated over and over and over again. I think uh, we, we have seen excessive use of money uh, and patronage in the main, as uh, <coughs> main uh, issues that are affecting the general membership. Because the reality is that our people are not working. Our people are unemployed. As a result, they become vulnerable, you know. So you have members of members, you know, someone recruits you, he puts you in his garage and he waits, he goes to the PGM to see whether or not the meeting can correct. And then he decides whether you must go to the meeting or you must not go. Just because he has paid your membership, you have no say. So we need membership of the African National Congress, not membership of individuals, because it has been proven. In the ANC, uh, people come and go, so we must be able to respect the values, the value system of the organization first. Yeah. Let's go back to... And in implemented uh, uh, resolutions that come from conference. You mentioned the expropriation of land. It's also not new. It was not implemented by the previous administration or the other administration. After conference, Kelly said, this is what the NEC must do. On that 52nd conference, the state must with immediate effect regulate but not prohibit ownership of land by non-South Africans. This regulation should be taken into account. To the state and mandated entities must exercise the legal right to expropriate property in public interest uh, for pu uh, public purposes. But the ANC has it's the resolution that has yeah, always been there, yes, never but implemented. The, but the ANC has never been as explicit as it was in, in, uh, in, in 2017 to say amend section 25 of, of the constitution so that you can expropriate without compensation. It has always been, in fact, uh, you know, the youth league of uh, my friend um, at the time in 2011 advocated for this in 2010 at the NGC for, for the ANC to accept but it was a bitter pill to swallow, but yeah. after that, nothing much happened. So I'm saying that at that, at, at that time, in 2017, the NC was much more explicit because, you know, you can't just talk about property clause and without specifically saying what are the, you know, intervening interventions that you need in order to make a decisive uh, uh, um, uh, steps. So I think that um, the, the ANC has failed. Uh, we spoke about the... Uh, nationalizing the Reserve Bank uh, because almost all the Reserve Bank are nationalized and, and there is a particular reason for that. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, we have been arguing that let's expand the mandate of the bank beyond uh, price stability 
to include employment because we are facing uh, issues of unemployment in South Africa. But we've not been able to do so. We get dismissed and we're told, no, the bank is going to be expensive. And we don't know what is ex expensive. It's those computers there because the, the building probably belongs to public works. So I don't know. So there's many, many other resolutions that have not been implemented, including state pharmaceutical company yeah. uh, to be created and so on and so on. All those things have not been done, making it difficult for the ANC to have decent... Inter, inter, interaction with the industries. So you, you, you are saying with three generations that have failed to implement those resolutions, this generation is going to do it? What, what, is, it, what is new that you are bringing that you think, for example, would help change Section 25 of the Constitution? Because they tried. Consultations were held. It was put through National Assembly and it failed at that point. Yeah, look, we need a, a radical approach. Uh, you know, people who understand that this is for f future generation. It's not for uh, us for now. So if we implement this resolution, even if it hurts uh, some of your friends in the industry, so be it. So, because that's what we have been uh, told, no, don't touch this. It's going to affect uh, food security. We are not uh, a bunch of irresponsible leaders who want to come and lead the ANC. But we want to do things differently because clearly, as you, as you correctly articulate, over time, the leadership have done the same thing, the same way. We're getting the same results, and we're saying it has to stop, and it has to stop now. Yeah. The question of fund fundraising, of course, the area that you are coming in for, if you come in and you become the, the treasurer. I mean, uh, the, the, the whole question of why the ANC has failed to meet its financial obligation, how, how do you analyze it? How do you assess it? Look, the ANC has outsourced itself to government. Uh, the, the policy making power is not sitting centrally with the ANC. That's why it's fragmented. You have the ETC, you have the policy unit, you've got this and that. And then at that time, the government is making uh, you know, uh, decisions of policy. And that's why the ANC has no relationship with industry uh, in the main, because uh, we, we cannot assure them certainty. Uh, it depends who the, who, who's the DG, who's the next minister. So we need to centralize the policy making at the at Lutuli House so that the industry will stop having a welfare arrangement with the ANC when they've got tenders. They must have a, a healthy uh, business relationship with the ANC because they want to influence the policy direction of the country. That is one fundamental thing that if we, 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 we are elected as Treasurer General of the ANC, we'll have to change immediately so that there's a queue there in Lutuli House. Nobody wants to go there. Everybody wants to go to Union Building. Yeah. Uh, that's a problem. And secondly, uh, you know, um, nothing prohibits the ANC to actually uh, uh, get involved in business, not in wrong dealings, in public dealings where we can have deals uh, in the different sectors, in the energy space, in the mining space, the pharmaceutical, in the telecoms, and all those things, yes. we can become a player there. Not for you see, you see, That's what you said 15 years ago. Yes, but we've you, got... You said we'll come up with regulation of how that particular got, space is going we've to, got be, to, do it now. to be regulated. We've got to do it why now. Why now? Why, it, why does it take 15 that's years? Why, that's why we're no longer sending uh, people we believe that they were strong revolutionaries. We're sending ourselves so that we can resolve the challenges that are faced by our movement. But thirdly, we cannot explain to any ordinary person why the ANC has failed to pay its workers. Firstly, we don't hold our employees uh, to account to the party. Contrary to what was being said there in Zondo Commission, I was a mayor for five years, I was a deputy minister for two years. There is no single leader of the ANC who ever called me and said, hey, chief, what are you doing? How can you being here help the ANC? The employees of the ANC are just doing their own things. They've got to be held accountable by the party that deploys them, and it must give them strict, strict conditions of them serving the African National Congress in a true sense. So talk to me about that. I mean, it's, a, it's a simple thing. You're talking of policy, right? It, it, it's, it's a gradual process. It didn't just happen that there's a political party funding. <clears throat> it was discussed in the ANC. Over and over again. One, you said, no, let us extend uh, public funding. So let's make sure that public funds, yeah, more allocation is given to political parties with the view, of course, that more of it will come to the ANC because of your proportion and the number of seats that, that you have. But you, 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 you've also said, let's, let's look at uh, the political party funding so that there is, there is more transparency. And today you are coming and you're saying, no, this thing is the thing that has now stood in our way. We, 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 can't, we can't make money because donors are afraid to come. Not particularly particularly quiet. Uh, I think that um, the, the ANC as an organization uh, ought to have uh, 
done certain things right uh, so that they can comply with the bill. Uh, but also nothing stops us. If the bill doesn't work for general, for all political parties, nothing stops us to review. Uh, where we are, I have not come to the conclusion that whether or not we need to review the party funding bill. Mm -hmm. I think that the ANC will have to do things differently uh, to comply with that bill because that bill does not pro prohibit the party to do certain things in, 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 uh, in, 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 in government. So, yeah. so for me, uh, it's, 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 I'm not really worried about the party funding bill, but if there are areas that need serious review, we will um, engage with experts in the, in the sector to come to the conclusion to say these are the propositions that we must make and then go out and speak to other political parties because obviously everyone is affected uh, by what is happening. There is a donor fatigue, nobody wants to be known, no one wants to be associated. Yet the reality is that politics and business, they are cousins. They, they have to speak to each other from time to time for the better good of all, of all ordinary citizens in the country. I spoke to, you, to your colleague, uh, your, your fellow comrade Maswale, uh, he's also going for the same position that you're going for. And he says part of the issues that uh, need to be dealt with is the question of um, the administrative work and the management of money within the ANC. For example, the ANC must face the reality that maybe we've got too many people on the wage uh, uh, bill. I, I disagree with him. The ANC has got less than 500 workers. I, I, when I was a mayor, I was responsible for almost 25,000 workers. Yes. So it cannot be that but, five, but, five, but, it cannot be that it, 500 workers. 500 can be it can be less workers if 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 uh, um, you've got the money. But when you don't have the money, 500 workers can be a lot of people. No, I I, I don't I don't agree. Uh, I think that the ANC needs a proper model. Uh, like all other liberation movements, you know, we have been doing studies uh, in in Tanzania in Angola to see how other liberation movements have been able to self-sustain. The ANC must do just that, learn from other peers and come and implement here other than to try and blame. As I'm saying that the problem of the ANC over the uh, intervening period has been a parasitic approach on funding. You wait for as Busiso has got the tender, you think you will give ANC something and then it, 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 when, it, when it's done, it's done through underhand. That has to stop. If you have a deal with the ANC, it has to be known by all that we are having a transaction uh, in the interest of ensuring that we sustain the political part. Because the ANC cannot survive without funding. Yeah. That is why many have been asking why this difficult uh, portfolio. We thought that we must assist the ANC uh, by intervening and ensuring that uh, we are able to bring sanity in the things that uh, have been critical because gradually we will uh, we'll erode the ANC and the ANC will be out of power. If we're not careful. So you, 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 you're going to run into the same situation that says, well, uh, there's no transparency or there is no equal participation in the economy because that company gets the deal because it went and knocked at Lutuli House and said, I'm going to give you 30%. No, 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 we're not going to be at 30%. If we come to 405, we need a deal with you in, the, in your space. It will be known in the public that uh, there's a business transaction. Anyone who's concerned can come and look into the deal. So, so the ANC can't hide when it, it does business. The ANC must be very frank with the people of this country because everybody knows. So there, is no, there, there will be no favors because there is always a separation of power between the party and the state. So we respect that and we understand that. But we are saying that the ANC, where it ought to have an interest, it, it can't be an underhand interest. It must be a known interest yeah. so that everybody but can respect be, that. It, it would be akin to using your political interference, for example, in SOEs, to say if that company is going to work with that SOE, it must come and knock at Lutuli House no, first. Look, and you're going to call the, the Minister of Public Enterprises to say, what are you doing for us? This is the company, work with them. No, that, that's a wrong way of looking at it. Uh, you know, um, so deals are, are done every day. Um, with politicians or without politicians. So we are not go, we're going to professionalize the treasury of the ANC so that you deal with men and women of stature who understand how to structure deals for the party in order for the party to survive. Whether we've called the minister and if the minister breaks the law, the minister must be dealt with if he breaks the law. But there is nothing wrong because it can't be right for you that you can meet with the minister, request a, a spectrum so that you can operate, but it's wrong for us as the ANC to meet with a minister to make a, a, a request. It, it can't be right. So we're saying whenever the ANC, because of the sensitivity that you are raising, embarks in any deals, it must make sure that it can stand scrutiny. 
So it must not be any underhand dealings between the Treasurer General and those people that are, are, are actually supporting the African National Congress. And as far as the question of um, the leadership and its, its composition currently, I mean, <coughs> the former president, Kalima Mutlante, saying a president should be in impeachable, I think Un, that's the word. Unimpeachable. Unimpeachable, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the word. The English is, is escaping me. Yeah. I mean, do, do you think the, the, the Palapala matter is a big issue in terms of the president getting a second term? Well, the National Executive Committee of the ANC, as we heard from uh, the Demotland, has not discussed Palapala. I don't think I have a jurisdiction to do. Uh, I can only have views that really would, would, uh, would not help us in this debate. So I would rather allow them to debate so that uh, as lower structures, when they come to us to say, here's the Palapala. The only thing I can comment, I, I can just say that, um, you know, we must avoid, we must learn from our previous experiences as and when we approach different, difficult, complex matters like Palapala, Pala, because at the end of the day, the truth shall set you free. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. That is the chairperson of ANC, Eguruleni, Zandile Masina, lifting his hand saying, I can certainly do better in fundraising for the party and managing the finances uh, of the party and putting his name in the hat for the 55th elected conference of ANC.